When people go missing, the majority of the time they turn up or are found well. However, there are cases of missing people who seem to have vanished without a trace. Despite the best efforts of search teams and loved ones, their disappearances remain unresolved and unexplained. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three mysterious disappearances. The Disappearance of the Flannan Lighthouse Keepers As a lighthouse keeper, work can be dangerous, and in emergency situations, help is often too far away. This appeared to be the case when three workers, James Ducat, Thomas Marshall and Donald MacArthur, sent shockwaves around the world with their sudden disappearance from Flannan Lighthouse. The disappearance was brought to light when a ship called Hesperus set sail for Eileen Moor. As previously planned, Captain James Harvey was delivering a relief lighthouse keeper to Flannan Lighthouse. However, on arrival at the lighthouse, he realized something strange was going on. The flag staff had no flag, all the provision boxes had been left on the landing and none of the three lighthouse keepers were there to welcome the ship. Even when Harvey sounded a whistle and shot a flare to try to catch the lighthouse keeper's attention, the island remained silent. A sailor, Joseph Moore, was sent on a boat to investigate further. According to reports, he experienced a sense of foreboding coming up to the lighthouse. When he arrived, he found the entrance gate and main door closed, beds unmade, clocks stopped, and no sign of the lighthouse keepers in the lighthouse or on the island. Moore reported this back to Harvey, who immediately sent a telegram to the Northern Lighthouse Board stating that a dreadful accident had happened at the Flannans, where three keepers, Ducat, Marshall and the Occasional have disappeared from the island. Robert Muirhead, a Northern Lighthouse Board superintendent, was tasked with setting up an official investigation into the incident. On arriving, Muirhead focused closely on the ropes strung along the island. From this, he theorised that in the middle of a storm, the men had gone down to the rocks to secure a box in which the mooring and landing ropes were kept and while doing so had been swept away. Muirhead's theory that water took out the three lighthouse keepers seems credible. Firstly, looking at the geography of Eileen Moor, the caves on the west would have been flooded by water in high seas or storms and this water would then explode out with considerable force and cause the type of wall of water that could have swept the three lighthouse keepers away. Alternatively, a storm could have washed the men away. The island was known to have experienced its share of storms. Ducat had experienced his dislike of the dangerous weather to his family before, and the construction of the lighthouse took two years longer than planned due to delays caused by rough seas and harsh weather. On the island, there was evidence of recent storms as the iron railings of the trolley tramway had broken in several places and the box containing the ropes had vanished, despite having been firmly anchored into a crevice. One thing Muirhead could not explain was why three experienced lighthouse keepers would risk going out in stormy weather conditions. This question was answered when James Love's research on the mysterious case unveiled that Marshall had previously been fined five shillings for equipment that had been washed away in a gale. Love used this fresh piece of evidence to strengthen Muirhead's theory. It was the fear of having another fine imposed for washed away equipment that led the men to leave the lighthouse and go to the rocks. Love argues that MacArthur had stayed in the lighthouse but seeing danger approach the other two keepers, had rushed out without his coat to warn them, before also being swept away. With Love's modifications, Muirhead's theory sounds plausible. However, it still could not answer why Moore found the entrance gate and main door closed when arriving at the lighthouse. If the three lighthouse keepers were in a rush, they surely wouldn't have had time to lock up the lighthouse, particularly if they thought they would soon be returning. The theory also fails to explain the log entries supposedly written by the three missing lighthouse keepers. These log entries hint that unusual events were taking place before their disappearance. Marshall writes of severe winds the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years. That's left Ducat very quiet and MacArthur crying. Given the men's experience in marine work and MacArthur's reputation for brawling, this behavior seems out of character. 
Log entries on the 13th of December mention a raging storm that left all three men praying, which is puzzling as they would have known they were safe in a secure lighthouse structure far above sea level. Even stranger is that no storms were recorded during these dates. This has led some to believe paranormal activity was taking place on the island. Eileen Moore has a history of unsettling accounts. Its chapel was said to move even the most non-religious person to worship and rituals, such as circling the building on your knees. Herders would never dare allow their sheep to graze overnight because they believed the land to be haunted and there were tales of sightings of strange creatures such as giant birds and little men. Some say that this paranormal atmosphere might have led the three lightkeepers to madness. MacArthur, known to be a volatile man, might have been sent over the edge and murdered the other two lighthouse keepers, and then taken his own life. Or the three men might have decided to flee the island and seek greener pastures. We already know how unhappy Ducat was to be living in the lighthouse from his correspondence with home. Despite nationwide speculation, there is still no perfect solution to answer what happened to the three lighthouse keepers who disappeared on Eileen Moor. The Disappearance of Drake Kramer Drake Kramer was 21 years old and looking forward to studying geology at college. Described as a loving and caring young man, it came as a shock when one day in 2015, he travelled alone to the Grand Canyon and was never seen again. Despite extensive searches involving helicopters and teams of searcher dogs trailing along dozens of miles of wooded areas and along the canyon rim, no evidence about Kramer's whereabouts was unearthed. Kramer's friends and family could not understand his actions. Excited about his upcoming studies, it made no sense that Kramer would suddenly pick up and leave everything without informing anyone. Just two days before Kramer was reported missing, he accompanied his father to a showing of American Sniper and was described as having been in good spirits throughout the evening. As a lover of nature, the Grand Canyon was one of Kramer's favorite places to be. In a Facebook post following a visit to the site with his aunt, he wrote of wishing he could stay there. But Kramer had never expressed interest before of going to the Grand Canyon alone. What's more, his father doubted whether Kramer had even taken the appropriate hiking gear with him. Kramer would have been more than aware of the dangerous winter conditions along the South Rim, which could be extremely snowy, with icy roads and trails and possible road closures. It seems absurd he would not have prepared himself properly for the excursion. This has led some to believe Kramer might have been suicidal. Before his disappearance, Kramer sent out a text message telling his loved ones that he had to give his body to Mother Earth. This might be an innocent reference to his love of the outdoors, but it could also be read in a darker light and indicate Kramer's depressed mental state at the time. Whichever way you read Kramer's message, the facts remain the same. Over five years later, there is still no sign of him, leaving his loved ones still searching for answers. The Disappearance of Matthew Green Matthew Green was a beloved maths teacher in Nazareth and an outdoor enthusiast who was last seen in 2013 in the Mammoth Lakes area. Green was hiking with friends in the region and staying at the Shady Rest campground. Due to car trouble, he was unable to join his friends on a trail and instead agreed to stay behind while his car was repaired and then meet up with them down the line. That day, he called the car repair shop and his parents to inform them that he was spending one more day in the mountains and texted friends in the evening. Green was never seen or heard from after this. When his friends returned to find his car had been fixed and waiting for him for over a week, they contacted the Mammoth Lake Police Department. Green had told his parents he was spending a day in the mountains in his final phone call, but he had not specified where. Green's loved ones started looking at the evidence at hand to predict where he had headed. Green had previously mentioned wanting to climb on glacier ice and had a habit of tearing out pages from his guidebook for the adventures he was pursuing. The pages missing were the rugged and icy terrain around Mount Ritter. Pouncing on this new lead, several of Green's friends and family flew to California and canvassed the area, even hiring a private plane to shoot high-resolution videos over the land. 
Despite best efforts, there was no sighting of Green and a Pennsylvanian judge declared him dead four days after his disappearance. Hopes were raised when a pair of eyeglasses, strikingly similar to the ones worn by Green, were found by a hiker in the Inyo Craters region, but these were later confirmed not to be Green's. With the little evidence and no body ever found, Green's fate remains a mystery. His family and friends mostly believe that Green was injured on the trail and either died immediately or eventually succumbed to the elements. Mount Ritter is an extremely challenging terrain, likened to climbing a stack of crackers, that even the most experienced climber would struggle on. With peaks reaching 13,000 feet, any misstep of Green's would have resulted in a fall which would almost certainly have killed him. However, Green was known to be an experienced and cautious mountaineer. Aware of the hardship of the trail, he would have been extra careful and critical in his movements, and if he thought the situation was getting too difficult, he would have turned back. This doubt has led Green's sister to wonder whether her brother was actually a victim of foul play. Green might have hitched a ride from another given his car had broken down or had a run-in with the workers in the car repair shop. Sadly, Green's family and friends have never been given closure to the case of what happened to the popular maths teacher. They continue to use the Find Matthew Green Facebook page for any further updates. But what do you make of these mysterious disappearances? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.